So last time I videoed, I said I was going to remove the mechatronics unit and send it off to get it rewired by someone. But I've decided I'm just going to have a go myself. What's the worst that could happen? So the DKG ECU comes with instructions. Um, cut that wire here. Yeah. Uh, and do a few of these bolts, one up there, a few down below, a few others dotted around, then this unit gets removed. Let's give it a go. Hey, hey, wait, wait, Riggs, wait! What? Now... It does, the instructions do say if you want to remove this whole white plug, you have to pull the, uh, pull the front end of the box off. It's just one bit big, uh, it's just one big spring clip. Of course, I got the bloody engine attached, haven't I? So, I might just chop that wire there and just pull this plug out because, um, when I bought this DKG, uh, it came with a uh, fresh like loom connector which goes into the top of the box because previously people were just drilling the uh, like metal housing run, running a grommet and running it out the top of there but this one actually comes with the connection so I terminate the plug myself and uh, yeah I have a twist lock connection just like an aircraft it's gonna be good it wouldn't be a living my boost life project if I didn't use the lathe Bloody can't get in to the mechatronics unit because this is foul in, so I'm going to take some material off it. Lol, that'll teach me to not measure it. It's not deep enough. Looking good. Hang on, have I gone too far? Okay, after some very, very general prizing. Nope. I feel like Indiana Jones opening up some sort of labyrinth. Alright. I'm going to have to watch that back to see if it was just oil I could hear falling out. Jesus Christ, how scary is this thing? Cool, on to the next step. Learning as I go, obviously. But you can see each of the shift solenoids. What is there, 10 of them? Some are shift solenoids, some are pressure solenoids. Um, so they've got uh, terminals on the back of them. And then the mechatronics unit, which is come with me across the, to the bench. And here you can see these plugs, which fit onto each solenoid everywhere now this metal cover comes off I rip out some existing wires and then bridge some terminals and the back of these caps have to come off and add wire into that for each shift solenoid so I'm doing it on the uh, kitchen table by doing it I mean taking the uh, mechatronics unit apart. Filthy buggers. So this plate needs to come off. So behind that plate you have this gubbins. Some absolutely tiny wires which actually you do not need anymore. I should probably double check that before I mess them up. But basically you um, run wires from uh, one side over to the other for various reasons, I don't know. To give you an idea how absolutely piddly these are, this is a human hair off my head.
Pardon? Silent. silent place. So I've soldered these uh, seven in place, did a few continuity checks, happy they're not touching each other, not the neater, neater soldering that's for sure, but hopefully they'll function well. The next step is to, these, solder, uh, these solenoid covers have to be popped off, and then uh, two wires per solenoid, a uh, power and an earth. Just pop one of the caps off there just soldered to these two terminals and they are much bigger so I'm using 18 gauge wire for these. Happy with that. So I've got the pinout diagram which basically says what terminal on the Mechatronics controller, the DKG ECU, does what. So um, I've been continuity checking each wire and then writing on the, writing down which terminal it goes to. So on this box it's got 10 shift solenoids or 10 solenoids. Uh, you don't use all of them, you leave three permanently powered so they're just stuck open constantly. But the rest are um, permanently 12 volt fed, well ignition 12 volt fed and then grounded by the DKG ECU to select whatever gear. Inside though there's seven, seven wires. Seven? Four, five, six, seven. That's right, seven. And therefore internal sensors on the box. So I'm not 100% sure but I'm going to guess line pressure, temperature, uh, RPM and possibly shift position I think is one uh, yeah so they're very small so I basically worried I'm gonna snap the wires off when I fit this cover back on so I've drilled and fitted a grommet so the idea is I'm gluing the wires in position so then when I do that tight tight bend to feed it through the cover it doesn't snap them off these are the terminals inside the mechatronics unit under that cover, the ones for the sensors. I get open circuit going between between them all, except where the wire, I've got these arrows pointing. Basically, second terminal down has got between 700 and 900 ohms resistance with all these. Is that normal? I know it's not a definite uh, dead short because it would be bugger all resistance, like one ohm or, or less. <sighs> I could just vid I could just do this bit without videoing it, but I do all my own stunts. That's why they're never any good. probably a few more screws missing. I'll find them later once the box is in. Yeah.